what have we been up to? So last video we just crossed the border, so we'll probably give you a bit of an update as to what happened at the border, I guess. Yeah, so we, coming across another border, we weren't sure where dump points and things were. So we were a little bit full pulling into the border village, but there was a dump point. And so we used that, used the rubbish bins, uh, and we also played a hole of the another ball links. Yeah, so there's a golf hole there near the big kangaroo holding Vegemite. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, is that right, kids? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we basically played that hole there. I don't know what number hole it was, um, but yeah, that was pretty interesting playing playing that hole as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Jada found a golf ball. There we go. Jada found a golf ball. I think we lost one as well. I think we yeah, lost more than a one. We might have lost a couple, but it's good to play anyway. It breaks up the trip. Yeah. It's also very bushy there. That's why, that why we lost. That's why we lost the ball. Yeah. yeah. It was really, really bushy. Ball. I hit a really good one, <laughs> and then I went into the bushes. <laughs> Here we go. So uh, after that. Uh, do you want to talk about the quarantine part at all? Or yeah, so that, this yeah? time we just pulled over into the quarantine bay. Um, I, yeah, I was surprised at how lax this one felt, I suppose. I think maybe because South Australia is so uh, strict on theirs. WA is like, yeah, South Australia's done a pretty good job and there's nothing in between. So, um, yeah, this time, yeah, she, she went through it. Um, I didn't have much anyway. I cleared the quarantine station and then we spotted the uh, border sign. Oh yeah, that the border sign there. So you've got to take the mandatory border sign uh, photo Image. there. So um, this particular case, SA was still standing, but WA, you've fallen down. Uh, the sign, WA had actually, I don't know, something to do with the storms, but it was actually lying on the ground. So you still get to take that photo not like it was used to but you're still crossing the border so it didn't matter to us anyway um just a, another border that we've crossed it's our first time our first time into the wa1 so that's pretty good yeah after that we spent the afternoon basically just chasing the sun which was interesting just it didn't seem to get dark for a really long time and we pulled up to the but we were famous also a bit confused with time zones were we? oh yeah we didn't really know what time it was because you phones are playing up so it goes one to the other but so the phone was on one our um, car was on another and I don't know yeah, I think no we idea. had three different time zones going yeah. so we're a little bit confused and the Sun wasn't setting so we thought we have no idea and then we pulled up to the iconic 90 so, mile straight yes the 90 mile straight so once again another mandatory picture with the sign so yeah. I was reading somewhere have you actually crossed the 90 mile straight if you haven't taken a picture I don't know, you decide, uh, but we think you've got to take that picture to have that proof, so um, it's a bit of fun there, taking those pictures with that sign. And Yeah, we got about halfway through, there's a rest area called Baxter you know, Rest Area. Meters. Yeah, but um, 90 yeah, miles straight itself, it's, it is, uh, it's just yeah, it's pretty straight. I wouldn't say it's the most enjoyable uh, road to be driving on, but since we were crossing and since it was sunset, it's actually quite pretty watching and chasing that sunset uh, and it did make that whole drive Turn left a bit more enjoyable um, so yeah that was pretty cool that we could actually do that we pulled in pretty late then to the rest area um, but it was full there were lots of people there there was a dump point there what was that called did you say uh, it was Baxter called? rest area yeah, yeah about halfway halfway down the street um, yeah pulled in there had a quick it's a, dinner. It's a big area back there, wasn't it? Like yeah. it was quite large, a lot of places to, to pull up. And when you look on Wiki Camps, it was probably one of the, uh, I guess, better reviewed ones. Yeah, it there. did. It had lots of really good reviews. And it had, so you've got the main rest area where the, where the truck is obviously rest, but then you've got uh, all these little tracks off the back. And it's almost like a campground in and of itself, uh, just off the side of the road. So I think there was probably 15-ish sort of vans that night that we were there and then onward to Esperance um, yeah so we were we were in search of water a little bit too we were there. running low on water we weren't really sure where we were going yeah. in Esperance as well so uh, there's a couple of towns I think it's called Salmon Salmon Gums and Grass Patch I think they're called yeah, so we did look at stopping there but People have said reviews, once again, Wikicamps, you know, people put yeah. reviews on there. They said the water wasn't um, 
wasn't the best. Well, they but... said one of them the, the water was a bit iffy. The other one said that the town was on tank water. So the preference is that if you don't really need the water, if it's not an emergency, please travel on um, to Esperance yeah, because and... they're. Yeah. And then the they get it tanked in twice a week, I think it said. The reviews of Esperance was yeah brilliant, so yeah. Um, just continued on to, to Esperance and filled up at the Visitor Information Centre, I believe it was. Yep, so water at the Visitor Information Centre, there's a really easy, easily accessible tap there. Yeah. Uh, recycling facilities, so you, all the recycling that you've collected, we, we split our waste. So rubbish bins and recycling, we did that. You do feel a little bit odd because you're literally parking right in front of the visitor centre yeah. and pulling up to the tap. And it does say you can use it, but it just feels odd in yeah. the front of the visitor information centre. Yeah. Yeah. Topped up fuel at the, the big truck stop there, which was a new experience for us with all the, the truckies pulling in, filling up their, their big rigs. So it is, it is cheaper um, because it's unmanned yeah. and you just literally go up to the pump and pay and tap so pay we're pretty used to that being from Sydney uh, so, um, you know you just go up there and you tap your card and tell me how much you want and the way you go so, yeah yeah so then, then we rolled out to Lucky Bay Lucky Bay is just magnificent, isn't it? I should point out here park fees. Um, we got to the entrance of the National Park. We knew we had to pay fees at Lucky Bay. Um, and we'd, we'd worked out that um, we'd only need a five-day pass in Cape Le Grand and then could get um, a bigger tourist pass for the northern end of WA um, because we were spending more time, obviously, up north. We didn't want to um, get a 28-day pass that would run out. So we worked out that we could get a just the five day one down here and then get an, a 28 day one up north. So we had to stop and do that. You can do that at the park. Uh, so again, it's just push and, and tap. So we put that on the windscreen. It's yeah. $15 a day or $25 for the five day pass. So that's just for the car and the vehicle to enter the park. Yep. That does not include any camp yep, fees. fees. Um, I can't remember what the camp fees actually were. So we'll probably we put it up, that one put it up somewhere. Ago. Um, but once again that you've got to book that early uh, to get the campsite so the, the thing about Lucky Bay Campground is that it's not allocated sites so you just rock up and then you pick your site um, so we were once again running late uh, and we're Big pulling day. in there and we're just thinking wow are we actually going to get a site here or what site are we going to get and we're a little bit concerned that I guess people could just pull in without paying their camp fees, which it's happened to us in the past. And then because you pay, they just take your site because you're not there. So we're a little bit concerned yeah. about that. Um, but when we got there, we're actually met by one of the rangers, yep. um, which was really cool. And he gave us the lowdown. Yeah. So there's two loops, I think. And is a... I think he called it the Eastern Loop and the Western Loop. Yeah. So the Eastern Loop was closer to the so-called closer to the beach or the foreshore. Uh, and then we got pushed up to the Western, Western Loop because the Eastern Loop was already full. 
Um, but to actually go there, he said you have to actually check in with a camp host. Yeah, it's like a host or a volunteer um, that's actually living on the site in a caravan themselves. Um, so that just kind of alleviated knowing that you actually are going to get your site and they actually so you are your monitoring. Booking number, yeah. your registration number, and what site you've chosen. Um, and then you go down and see them. There's yeah. a sign, like an A-frame signboard out the front um, of his site saying camp host or yeah. campground volunteer or something, it said. So yeah, so if you're going to Lucky Bay, rest assured that if you booked your campsite, you're pretty much going You'll to get, get a campsite. Yeah. So we were lucky enough to, we thought we were lucky enough because yeah. we got pushed up to basically the back of the camp because we were late. But actually that gave us a great overview yeah. over Lucky Bay, like, could, from your caravan, you could just actually go out it and just the water. up over the tree line. Yeah, whereas some of the other campsites down lower, literally, you just nestled in with the trees and other caravans. They were closer so. to the water, but they didn't get the view that we had. So yeah, but Lucky beautiful. Bay itself is just beautiful, you know, like the white sands, the turquoise water. Is that, is that even the color? Turquoise? Yeah. Yeah, see, I know my colors. Um, and it's just, you know, there's walks, there's rocks, the, the cliffs around it. It's just absolutely a, amazing amazing spot like yeah. we've never really encountered uh, a beach like that before yeah and we were pulling in just on sunset almost wasn't it so we had a quick walk around the campground to to orient ourselves but we didn't really get the view uh, until the next morning um, which was yeah. still cloudy wasn't it when we woke yeah. up um, but then the sun busted through at oh, about midday I think and it just the the color of this water just changed you could you could really see the difference of, of blues and greens um, it was a spectacular view. I yeah. Think. So, what did we do there? And what else did we do at Lucky Bay? We went for the walk up around. Um, what was that? Look at the Flinders Monument walk, yeah. um, which was up around the headland of, of Lucky Bay. So that was just a. It wasn't a long track. No. Um, it's quite enjoyable because you actually get to walk up along the rock faces and explore the bits of cape of, of around there and find some little caves and shelters to yeah. to explore so as we're walking through there like there's a guy fishing, fishing wasn't there yeah. um, just fishing along the rock so never got out never got the right out while we we're there just too short on time but um, Yeah, so we consider his little good luck charm. Because as soon as you walk by, you pulled in a fish. So. Said, so do you want us to stay? He goes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then as you keep walking along the rocks, the kids found the what do you want to call it? A sea sucker dragon thing. A sea, a sea sucker dragon, dragon thing. thing is what we called it. I don't think we got any footage of it, but no. um, it's like a black cuttlefish snail without its shell type dragony looking thing. Just. Yeah. There were two of them in amongst the weeds. So we'll see if we can find it, but we don't really know. Sea sucker dragon thingy is because mum said it looks like a sea sucker dragon thingy. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that name's stuck. So it's stuck as a sea sucker dragon thing. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool to just explore along the We found in the morning, remember the kids were riding their bikes and they bumped into their friends from Streaky Bay. Streaky Bay. So that's something that we've learned along the trip is that um, there are families doing the same thing as us different different journeys different um itineraries but you do meet up along the way so they've got a, a few children as well so the kids were riding their bikes and they've hit it off and so now we have another traveling family that we wave to and say hello to um yeah. along the way so that was pretty exciting so too for pretty, them pretty cool that uh, to catch up just out of the blue yeah they actually met two family oh, no one two one family two. yeah two yeah. families so yeah pretty cool to to catch up along and, the way for the and, kids I guess share information too. Um, you know, what are you, what are you doing? Where what are you seeing? What have you heard? Um, just different information that you just you get from fellow travellers on the road. It's not from opinion sites or review sites or um, you know paid tours or anything like that. It's actual real world advice of, of what people are doing, and it makes you just think about how you can tweak your journey um, to to sort of yeah. catch things or drop things off. Um, yeah. So that was pretty pretty interesting as well. Um, so yeah. They kids mentioned we wanted to go or they went for a swim because yeah. they were just bugging us going when are we going for a swim when are we going for a swim because the had water rubbish weather the whole time until there just wasn't the best so <laughs> yeah. decided to take the ute and drive on the beach um i couldn't no. couldn't i had to do it you know i don't like sand and salt water with vehicles but i just had to yeah. drive on that sand and it was pretty special driving on it because that sand we've never seen such it's white like sand else. before and it's 
Sand was almost like porcelain, wasn't it? Yeah, like really fine, smooth, white. Like it was just, yeah, it squeaked under your feet, but it didn't move. It was like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, but it was just really the different, different type of sand and yeah, just driving along the sand, you know, with a, you know, cars driving sand, turquoise blue greeny water on the yeah. left like it was quite magic just driving along that beach it was and, sort of like it was white sand into clear, crystal clear water and as the water went out it just changed just ever so slowly into these different shades and it was just spectacular yeah to just uh, basically you can't believe you could even drive on that beach they allow you to drive on it um, back on in Sydney in the east coast you kind of don't get to do that very often yeah sorry east coast we think we have a new favourite <laughs> yeah, so um, it was it was pretty spectacular. They're just about able to pull up and you know park the car or the unit on the beach and let the yeah. kids jump out and have a swim. So and they swam, didn't you, for hours? Probably but, about an hour and a half to two hours. They were just in the water playing and. But there was also something yeah. else about the sand. When you ran on it, it hurt your feet. Yeah, it was almost like running on concrete. It just didn't. It just had no give in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was so, but anyway, the, the kids were just playing in the water and, you know, just allowed me to, I guess, shoot the drone up and then take some just amazing footage of what Lucky Bay is um, as a site. So, yeah, it's probably one of the, for us at the moment, it's one of the nicest beaches we've been to. Yeah. That's so, why yeah. it's called Lucky Bay. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky to be there. Yeah. What else is there? Um, so then we headed from there back into Esperance um, for a couple of nights. We booked the Pink Lake uh, Tourist Park. Um, not our first choice, but everything else was either full or couldn't accommodate our size van. So just a little heads up, um, if you are planning on staying in any of the, um, the caravan parks or the touristy areas and you have an itinerary, try and just get some information like that because we, we really struggled to find uh, a site big enough um, to hold our van that, that yeah, could accommodate our time frame. So, so we ended up at the Pink the, Lake Tourist Park. Yeah. Uh, which was a, a decent park. It had three separate play areas um, for the kids: a jumping pillow and a playground and a and a swing set. Of course, all the amenities that that you need from there. And we just um, did work and washing and the car service and. Yeah, it's part of the reason we we needed to we actually had to get the car service because. I guess I calculated that it, we had to get to Perth, but we'd done all the kilometres way in advance. So, you know, jumped on the little app and it said, oh, if you don't service it by this time, it's not a complimentary service anymore. So, um, yeah, managed to do all that and just stock up again, I guess. Yeah. Um, at Woolies and... I forgot to mention though, we slept really well that night because on the way out of the park, <laughs> Jensen spotted the those people up on the hill, remember? Oh, uh, that's right. On the, I forgot about. I'm like, why? What was so good about that sleep? Because I, I, yeah, that's why. Because we had that big bushwalk. Yeah. So as we were <laughs> driving out of Lucky Bay, um, we were just heading towards Esperance, yeah. and then the young fella looks out and goes, "Oh, there's there's, there's, there's cars." I'm like, "No, that's not. Oh, yeah, there are cars there." And he's looking up, and he goes, "Oh, there's people on top of the that hill over the there. hill." I'm like, "No, the there's rock. not. There's not." So then, as we're driving, we looked out and. Yes, there was. Yeah, there was actually people there, so we thought it was early enough in the day, so we thought we couldn't not climb that yeah. peak or mountain. What was that mountain called? Uh, Frenchman Peak, and it was basically a rock just in the middle of the national park. You caravans can't actually park up in the the main car park, so we had to park down the bottom of the hill. There's uh, almost like a turnout at the bottom. We parked down there and walked up, not yeah. really knowing. Um, I suppose what we were in for we just seen people go up thought okay let's give it a go we got to the car park sign it's a class five uh, bushwalk so that's obviously the hardest with no real defined tracks and um, yeah no no accessibility I suppose well, look, well. it kind of was defined if you call little white cannons on the rock so yeah, little, little, little placards scattered where you kind of have to look for yeah. them. you got yeah. to call that a But a it was drone. not developed at all. Yeah, it was quite, um, it was surreal. Like, we actually felt like mountain goats climbing that yeah. thing. It was really steep uh, in certain places and, you know, trying to hold to the kids' hands and just make sure they were okay. Yeah. 
Uh, but literally, you're climbing up a rock face. Yep. It, it was quite, and it's kind of straight up, like. Yeah. And there's no respite. It's not like it goes up and then flat and then up and then flat. It's up the whole yeah, way. Yeah, up the whole way. So make sure you got some good shoes and stuff on. Yep. Um, there was a couple of people where you could see them slipping, trying to get grip. Yeah. Probably not the ideal thing <laughs> uh, to not have proper footwear up there, but it's. Um, it was actually I'm thinking did we see someone up there with bare feet yeah. yes yeah yeah well, there you go you do it in bare feet if you want but uh, <laughs> someone else was attempting it in thongs as well which I don't think that was going to end well for them yeah so it, it is a pretty steep rock face quite a, a challenge getting up there yeah. uh, with the kids but when you're up there it was it's you pretty get amazing yeah 360 degree views of um, Cape Le Grand National Park we could see Lucky Bay um, Thistle Cove, you can see, or pretty, we didn't get an exactly clear day, but you could make out Esperance over the other side as well. Yeah, um, and then, yeah, once you're up there, there's a, you get all the views and stuff, but underneath the, the peak or whatever you want to call it, there's like a bit of a cave and stuff yeah. in there to, to explore, so, yeah. Spent a bit of time in there, um, the kids were climbing and finding, exploring. Finding, and finding, that, finding, finding your home, Nooks Jada. and crannies. Yeah, found new cubby houses and new homes. Yeah, found a little ledge that they called that home. So yeah, it's quite surreal to see that, and it's like a big opening then that looks back out over to the over to the top. And then when you're on the peak and you're looking back down at your caravan, you realise how high you actually, you actually are. are. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think it was about three kilometres, um, and it took us about ninety minutes. I think. Sounds about right, 90 minutes. Um, yeah. But it's deceptive because the three kilometers is, is straight up and straight yeah. down. Coming down was interesting as well, bracing yourself so that you didn't, didn't go rolling down the, down yeah. the rock face. And it's, I don't know, it hurts your knees for me going down. I'd rather go up than down, but yeah, it, it is steep to go down. And you kind of just trying to make sure you got your right um, footing in place. So. But we're glad we did it. We're glad we actually stopped and took the time to to go and explore. It was very busy, there were lots of people there. Yeah. Um, lots of different ages and stages of life, but yeah, we're really glad that we, we stopped. Yeah. We so think. We are, <laughs> and that's why we slept so well, wasn't it? In we did slept so well in Well, the kids slept really well, so. So yeah. it was nice to just have that, that rest day um, for, for the car and, and all of that as well. Uh, Esperance car wash. Yes. Yeah, there wasn't, I don't know, was there a lot of car washes I don't think there was a lot of options. Um, but we've been carrying salt on the caravans, on the car, and it was just, since we stayed up under cliffs, the car was just covered in salt, and it was, uh, it was, it was actually irritating me, and I was just like full paranoid that it's rusting away, uh, even though it wasn't, but I just don't like salt on the car, so yeah, once we got back from Lucky Bay, we did go into Esperance and just wash give the, car the cars a, a complete wash down, and just get rid of all that salt that had attached itself to the, to the vehicle because it was you could see it the, it's like these little crystals all over, the crystal over the car um yeah. and yeah before that it got the car coated and it was you know you could see the water and yeah. beating off but this particular was just sticking so you could know there was a lot of salt on the car yeah. um there so yeah after that um, we did some we did, we did some shopping and we just wanted to mention that brumby's is a is a bakery <laughs> over oh, yeah. in esperance and after hours, or not after hours, approaching closing time, they actually have a two for one sale at the Esperance Brumbies. So, so you... yeah, so there's a little tip towards the end of the day if you go into yep. um, Brumbies, uh, especially at Esperance, Esperance yeah. there's a two for one special. So, so it's on certain products anyway. But uh, yeah, if you get in, if you get in early enough, uh, you get some pretty good things. And while we're there, we missed out on a massive chocolate eclair. There was a lady beat us to it, didn't they, kids? Like that. It was, it was huge, but uh, we, st we still managed to get some, I think, jam and cream and jam. They were nice. It was nice to have some fresh dessert. So we had it for dessert that yeah, night. So so. Fresh anyway, pastries. So. Little tip there, Brumbries at Esperance. <laughs> two for one special towards when they're closing. Yeah. So, yeah. We didn't find Esperance um, had all that much else to do. We think a, a lot of the attraction is actually in the, the beaches around the National Park. We went down to the foreshore and for a bit of a walk along the jetty. Uh, kids had a bit of a play in the playground and then just a little yeah. drive before we um, met, met some new friends and uh, it's odd seeing yeah. odd seeing Jensen actually punch the ball because 
play NRL. We don't play AFL. It's NRL. So he's holding a different ball. So uh, playing with the kids yeah. and that there as well. So it was that pretty was cool. They just make friends wherever they go, yeah, which is really nice. Yeah. So. Um, but I was there anything else we really did at Esperance, I can't really... Just on the way out of Esperance, we stopped at the Pink Lake. We stayed at the Pink Lake Holiday Park, um, which is not far from the Pink Lake itself. So on the way out, that's what we did. Stopped by the Pink Lake, and uh, what did we actually see at the Pink Lake? Kids? A ginormous salt pan. Just a <laughs> salt pan. So that was not pink. It was not pink. It was just a big salt pan. So it was actually empty. And I think they haven't had water in it for quite a while now. Quite a while, yeah. Um, apparently, according to the lady at the caravan park. So, um, yeah. And then we just continued on. Continued on towards Albany. So that, that day was another driving day. And as we were driving, we could just see um, almost like these small drop of smoke that slowly got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it turns out that there was a massive bushfire um, uh, what do they call them a planned burn yeah. in in the next national park over um so it's the fitzgerald i think the, it was. yeah fitzgerald river yeah. or something um and we just saw it coming up and so at one stage we just passed it massive um clouds of smoke going on so we're glad we didn't uh, stop in there because that would have been quite daunting yeah um but Funny enough, we actually, did we stop at the lolly The Ravensthorpe, Ravensthorpe candy store. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we stopped in there. And then who did we see there? Yeah, we saw some, <laughs> some more of um, friends that the kids had made. And they actually stayed in the Fitzgerald Park. And they said, yeah, they, that it wasn't, wasn't that bad. But yeah. uh, it looked probably worse than what it actually, actually was. was. But the lolly store, what about the lolly store, kids? So yeah, so the collecting lollies and um, basically at the lolly store allowed them to get a bag a and it's based, based on based on weight. I guess we were told the lolly store actually had lollies that you remember as a kid. So proper like the proper original, original old school lollies that you used to pay 20 cents for in a little paper bag that now cost a million dollars. But anyway, you little bag and the kids got to scoop. Pick and mix um, their own. Yeah, just pick through the little containers and stuff. And then, Jada, what did we actually miss out on? What wasn't in there? That you really wanted and it was empty. Licorice all sorts. Yeah, the licorice all sorts <laughs> container was uh, was empty. Was completely empty. Completely so empty. Uh, apparently they were waiting for another shipment, but I don't think anyone else in the car here really cares for licorice except me and no. Data. But no, um, that yeah, <laughs> so yeah, the kids was fun. Kids got to put it and and scoop their bags in, and then basically it's all paid on weight. So costs yeah. a, a little bit of money, but yeah, the I think it was about fifty bucks, 40, 40 bucks or something, or something for. Yeah. Four, four Three, bags of lollies. So, four bags yeah, of the kids filled their bags up with lollies, and we actually only used paper bags, so they weren't big enough. So, the lady <laughs> at the counter said, Here, have some, have some plastic ones, and the kids just have them. So, um, good experience that the kids just got to, got to have. And it was it. a good break in the day as well, um, with not much else to see along there. Yeah. Uh, approaching um, Albany, we were trying to work out what to do with accommodation. There was a rest stop, wasn't there? Yeah, there's um, a rest stop at Albany. Um, about 15Ks out. So we sort of read some reviews and some people like it and some people didn't. So we thought, well, we'll just make that decision when we get there. Yeah, so we went and checked out the little rest stop. Literally, there's a rest stop on the side of the road. Um, people are saying they get like 15 or 20 vans in there and I could I not imagine um, them getting that many vans in there. But it was just, yeah, on the side of the road. And I guess we just didn't really feel safe unhitching the van, leaving it there, then going into town. Um, yeah. So we basically decided that we'll try and see if we can get some accommodation somewhere. Yeah, yeah. so I just rang um, from Wiki Camps again, just clicked on one of the caravan parks and rang in. Uh, they said yes, they could accommodate us. Um, I think it was a bit expensive for what it was. So it was $88 for a powered site uh, for the night for the five of us, uh, which I thought was quite expensive. Um, but Again, last minute, couldn't really, um, getting late in the day, we just thought, let's just do it. Just find something. Just find something. Yeah. And so, um, when we got there, I just spoke to the to the guy on the counter and I, I explained what we were doing. And he said, oh, I've got no one coming in tomorrow, so feel free to stay all the way up until five o'clock if you like. Um, leave your van here and go and do what you need to do. So, 
that was a positive in that yeah. we, we were, well originally we're thinking oh 5 p.m we're not going to need that yeah. long to to stay here like yeah. what's there to do in albany, yeah, albany. Hey guys, so apparently there's a lot more to do in Albany than we expected. So when we filmed this video and when I was editing it, it just looked like it was going for way too long. So I actually had to cut this one into a, a two-part series uh, as we continue our way on to Perth. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button because we're always checking out new sites and playing around with different gear and equipment. Until next time, see ya. Bye.